Let's see how to get historical data of stocks from Yahoo Finance using Python. Of course, we're going to get the data from Yahoo servers, so we need to know the URL. And this has to be some specific URL that's not that easy to find, so I'm just going to paste it to my code. And I'll also paste it to the video description, so you can copy it and paste it as well. So here is the line, and let's quickly go over it. So basically what we have here is a URL that we build using an F string. So here is the general URL, HTTPS, query one, financeyahoo.com, and then this address within their website. And then we need to specify the stock, and then the period one and period two, where period one is the beginning of the period, the date in which you want your data to start, and period two is the date in which you want your data to end or to finish. And then we also have to provide the interval and it means how frequent your data points need to be. And it basically can be every one day or every week or every month. And then we also have to provide, you know, the rest of what we have here. So this is basically the URL and this is where we're going to get our data. So let's see how we can use this URL to get the data from Yahoo Finance. So to do that, we're going to use pandas and we're also going to use date time. So let's import both pandas and date time. And the first thing that we're going to define is the list of the stocks or tickers that we want to follow or that we want to get the data for. To do that, I'll go to the Yahoo Finance website. And here in the search box, we can type in any company or stock that we want to get the data for. So as an example, let's see the data for Apple. So I just type in here Apple. And as you can see, Apple was found and if I choose it, we can see the ticker over here. So the ticker is what we need. I'll copy it and let's paste it to our program. And I'll create a list of the tickers I want. So we're going to start with Apple and later on we can add more tickers if we want. So next, as we said, we need to provide the start date and the end date. So let's say that we want the data for the last three years. So the end date will be today's date. But we need this date in the timestamp format, so dot timestamp. And the only problem with what we have here is that this function, timestamp, returns a number in the floating point format. So a number and then point and then some other number, like a fraction. And on the other hand, the URL over here expects a number, so without the fraction, without the point something. So to convert this number to the correct format, I'm just going to use int to convert it to an integer number. And now that we have that, it's very easy to get the start date. I'm just going to copy this line and replace the year to three years back. And the last thing that's missing for our URL is the interval. So let's provide an interval as well. And this is going to be a string and it can be either one week or one month or one day. So I'll go with one week. But if you want, it can also be one month or one day. Now we're simply going to go over the stocks in our list. And for every one of them, we're going to generate the correct URL based on the stock or the ticker. And then we're going to use the read CSV from Pandas to get the data from Yahoo Finance as a CSV file. So this needs to go here. And then once we have this URL, we can use the read CSV function. And let's also print the name of the stock so we can follow its progress. Now, just so we see what we actually get, let's print the URL. And let's run our program. So for Apple, this is the URL that we get. So let's copy it. And let's paste it to the browser so we can see the actual data that we're going to work with. And as you can see, we got a CSV file. Let's open the CSV file. And here it is. Here is how it looks like. So as you can see, we have several columns here. We have the date, we have the open value, the high value for the day, the low value, the close value, the adjusted close value, and the volume for this specific day. Out of this data, I'm only interested in two columns the date, which is index zero, and the adjusted close column, whose index is, let's count, 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so column 0 for the date and column 5 for the adjusted close. To get a specific column out of the data frame, we're going to use the iLock function. And we want all of the rows, but only column 0. And let's do the same thing for the prices. So all of the rows, but only column 5. Okay, and we don't really need to print the URL, so let's remove this line. And what we can do now is use PyPlot to display these values on a chart. So let's import PyPlot. And I'm simply going to create a chart of the dates against their closing price. So it's very simple. We're simply going to plt.plot the values for x, which are the dates, versus the values for y, which are the closing prices. And once we're done with our loop of stocks, we're simply going to show this chart. So plt.show. So let's run our program. And we got the chart for the Apple stock for the last three years. Let's now try to compare the Dow Jones to the S&P 500. So let's get back to Yahoo Finance. And if I look for the Dow Jones, I can find it here. And as you can see, since the Dow Jones is an index and not an actual stock, its sticker has this arrow up symbol, okay? So what it means is that when we paste it here, it's not just going to work like this. We need to replace this symbol, this up arrow symbol, with percent %5e, like that. So if you have here companies or stocks, you don't have to make this change. But if you work with indexes, such as the Dow Jones, you have to replace this up arrow with percent %5e. Let's also get the data for the S&P 500. And here is the ticker. And again, I need to replace the up arrow with percent %5e. Now we would better add a legend so we know which line is which stock. And for each of the stocks, we're going to add the name of the stock to the legend. And of course we have to display the legend. And one last thing that I want to do is to normalize all of them. And this is because different stocks have different values. And using the absolute values, won't tell us much because the differences can be very big but what we really care about is which one made the most profit and this is usually measured in percents so what i'm going to do is to normalize all of the values this can easily be done by simply dividing all of the values by the first value this way we know that the value at the beginning of the time period that we measure that we show is always one because if we divide it by itself it's going to be one and all of the values that come after it are represented relatively to this value. So for example, if we got 20% up from the initial value, we're going to see 1.2. And this way, all of the stocks are normalized and we can see all of them on the same graph and it makes more sense. So let's do that. Let's divide each set of values by the first value. And if we run our program now, we can see the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 one against the other on the same time period. 